So thank you very much for being back uh, on time, more or less. And we're now going to move to our uh, next session for this afternoon, um, starting with a, a double presentation or a double act with uh, one single person. Um, I would like to call Hélène Rubimata. Hélène belongs to the EBU Academy, and she will present to us the Media Roads Kill Bites. Um, do you want to use this? Sorry, you stay there. If you could give one piece of advice to yourself at the beginning of your career from where you are now, what piece of advice would you give yourself? Focus on software. That's pretty succinct. Try to learn and try to experiment. Seize every opportunity. Be at the edge of what's happening in regard to technologies, but also in regards to strategy. I would like to have probably had more practice at networking. Don't go to art school. <laughs> Get a good um, computer science, something like this. Cutting the noise really early on to listen and realize that change was happening. Continuous improvement, trying to experiment new things, learn new things. Sometimes it would have been helpful to take a step back, look at a situation. But I don't think I would have taken different decisions. Get older, but learn every day something new. Hello, good afternoon. You just heard uh, a short best of the Media Road Skill Bites podcast. Um, so before I tell you more about the, the podcast, um, I would like to tell you a bit about the EBU Academy. Okay, so uh, the title actually of the conference, Accelerating Media Innovation, uh, properly describes what we are trying to do at the Academy, at the EBU Academy, that is design courses for our members, for the professionals from our members, uh, to help them cope with the changes, especially in the technology environment. So how do we do it? Year after year, uh, we have built a learning uh, knowledge ecosystem with a strong and trusted brand. Uh, we work in collaboration with our members and our trainers to design the courses uh, that we think will help uh, our organizations cope with change and also provide the, the professionals with the skills they need to remain agile and employable and relevant on the market. Every year we train about 2,400 professionals. Uh, we have different formats, international masterclasses at the EBU in Geneva. Um, on-site training workshops to train entire teams at members. And since now, since the beginning of 2008, we have now also what we call regional learning hubs. Namely, we have three of them, one in Poland, one in Slovakia, and one in Georgia. And really the idea is to bring our content and our trainers to the region and to train communities of professionals. Rather than asking them to come to Geneva, which is very costly and difficult, we go to them. Um, you see some of the key uh, topics we are working on now in terms of training, but our offer keeps changing as we do careful monitoring of the trends and topics. So these are, I would say, the hot topics of this year. <laughs> So, you may wonder how come we did participate in this adventure of the Media Road and Network Hub and, um, and um, podcast. Well, the proposal came from Judy Parnell to start with. She contacted us Academy and really the idea was to find a product to, to create an event that would document the needs that technologists have to acquire different sets of skills now. Um, originally, we considered doing a conference, an interactive online conference, but we also decided in the end to be a bit more innovative ourselves, and that's why we opted together with our colleagues in technology and innovation and with the BBC, we eventually opted for a podcast. So, basically, 
Each episode of that podcast, Judy mentioned it uh, this morning already, it consists of an interview of one inspiring media person, not always a technologist, mostly technologist, but not just. And that person tells us about his or her professional career and also about the skills and competencies that he or she thinks was crucial for him or her to tackle the challenges of his work and to continue developing and to still have a job. Time is a bit too short, I think, to go through the list of all the soft and hard skills that have been identified by our interviewees, by our, uh, the people we interviewed. Let's just say that there are three things you may want to remember. Uh, it's important now that everyone in media, and we heard it again, has some kind of knowledge about IT skills. Maybe not very advanced, but still. And then there are two very important skills or soft skills you should have. Curiosity is one of them. Remain open to everything that's coming around. And also the ability to work together. And together with people who are very different from you, whether geographically or whether in terms of professional background. Just a few quotes here, but you heard already a bit. Um, it's really about mixing team together. This was what Yula Kiryaku from CYBC in Cyprus told us. And it's also getting as much experience as you can in as many different uh, areas as you can. This was Richard Wokhorn from RTE. So I think now it's just finished almost. Uh, if you haven't had a chance yet to listen to the Media Road Skill Bites podcast, please give it a try. We have 10 episodes, about 10 minutes each. Every time you will hear about someone uh, that maybe you don't know, probably you don't know. It's a very, um, thanks to, to our host, Owen O'Sullivan, and to our producer, Mickey Curling. These are intimate, personal, yet informative episodes, informative interviews. You will learn a lot, and please give it a try. Otherwise, regarding podcasts, we felt at the Academy that we needed to do something on this as well. So we have a Network and Learn, where we will bring several members and experts to discuss podcasts and public service media. This will take place in Geneva on the 28th and 29th of November. We still have spaces, so please join us. And we're also going to be proposing uh, a masterclass. It's a bit of a challenge, uh, how to become an engaging podcaster in one day. Not sure we will succeed, but we can give you the basics. Thank you very much. Thank you, much. Thank you very much, Hélène. Um, two weeks ago, on the occasion of the IBC, uh, we awarded the uh, Sandbox Prizes. We heard about the Sandboxes this morning and how successful they were. Um, and uh, prizes were awarded to show the success of those projects. So the first prize went to a project by France Television, and we have a little video to show.
Thank you. And we're, we're very fortunate to have with us today one of the representatives of the first prize winner. Um, we, I would like to invite Philippe Petitpont from Newsbridge. Hi, thank you. So this is a three-minute pitch, very short. So, yes, we are here thanks to France Television and EBU Media World, and thanks again, like we said, at IBC for this prize, and we are very proud of you having it. And we will talk very quickly about what we do at Newsbridge. Uh, the clickers here, I think. Oh, which one? It's a good one. Okay. So at Newsbridge, we help video journalists to find very quickly the most relevant part of any content. Among thousands of thousand hours of video, we help them to extract really quickly what might be relevant to build a story. The main issue we are dealing with, on we were working on with France Television two years ago on, on this sandbox, is that today, well, it was in 2018, but it's even more now, uh, media companies gathered more than 30 million hours of video content. 30 million hours is, uh, is uh, a lot of content. It's nearly the edge of the Great Pyramid of Egypt, so it's, uh, it's a lot of content. And uh, of course, in 10 years, it will be five times more at minimum. Uh, so the main issue is um, when you are gathering as a media company maybe 50 hours from TV journalists on the ground, how can you make from 50 hours a three-minute TV show? Well. It's quite complicated, you need a lot of people, so it costs a lot of money and you can't thought everything. And um, those 50 hours of content that have been gathered just one morning, also uh, you have to publish really the highlights very quickly, so you have to be as fast as possible to have, uh, of course, the best audience possible. And when you have did the highlights and just extract the most relevant part of this content, what you will do, what will you do with those 50 hours of content? You will have to index this to valorize it. So there's um, really some, uh, some content that can have some value on the market, but today we don't have enough time to, to sort those content and to index those content. So what we have built at Newsbridge is uh, an algorithm on a platform that is able to detect what might be relevant in the content using AI on cognitive technology. So we are detecting faces, we are detecting people, context, and also speech to text. The goal is to provide a human way to browse the content and to extract the highlight very quickly. We've taken an example just to understand how does it work and what we can do with it. It's, um, uh, this example is about John Lennon, and um, we have taken this one be be because in, um, I think it will be in two months, it will be the commemoration of his, uh, the 50th commemoration of his death. So let's take this example. A journalist wants to make a story about um, what he has said about musical style at this time. So, okay, we have a search engine and we can browse among, okay, play, all the archive content of a TV channel, for example. So with the facial recognition, I will extract very quickly here every sequence where John Lennon has been detected. And then let's take an example. I want the part where he's speaking about reggae. There's a music in Jamaica called reggae, which has been around for years under the disguise of ska, blue beats, et cetera, et cetera, but it finally formed itself into reggae. And that's about the really newest thing that's happened in music in the last five years. This sequence might be relevant because he's speaking reggae and it was not really famous at, at this time. So maybe you can make a subject about that saying a visionary John Lennon or something like that. So this is just an example of what we do. And uh, we do that also on live content. And with France Television, it's, it was on live news, on hard news. And the goal is to provide, to, to make sure that journalists are really working on investigation so they don't waste too much time indexing or browsing content. Um, also, the goal is to be able to do that as fast as possible, uh, to have the freshest content. And to be able to reuse content is also something that is very, very powerful because, uh, uh, well, gathering content is, uh, is something that is going higher and higher. So. There's something to do with, with those content to index. I think it's three minutes, so thank you very much. And if you're curious, we have a demonstration just on the right on the other room. Thank you.
Thank you. And we have the pleasure of having a second uh, winner of one of those uh, sandbox prizes. And I would like to ask uh, Renaud Schoenbrot from Onhertz. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, so Onhertz helps mainly radio station in digital transformation and virtualization. And we do that with two uh, different products, which I will um, come back to. But I would like to, to mention that, uh, in fact, Onerts is born as an entrepreneurship uh, project within the VRT sandbox. And now it became a, a startup and the, the tools is in production uh, weekly or even daily. So basically, we started with an experiment uh, doing a radio show in a hot air balloon. And a year, year later, we are on the market with a complete product. Let me just go to the next slide. If I know how. Okay. So we, we have two products. The first one is Lumo. is basically a complete radio studio in an application. Uh, with the idea of making radio presenter more, mo more mobile, basically making radio from a hot air balloon maybe, but also from a bus, from the street or from a living room. Uh, of course, contribution is not new. We can do contribution with a simple codec, a box with microphone uh, connections. But Lumo offers more control to the radio presenter, so he can decide when to launch the music. He can place phone calls directly from, a, from an iPad or any, any tablet. Then we, at IBC, we introduced a second um, product called Artiso. This is a more a techie tool, I would say. And basically, we virtualize um, audio infrastructure. We mean we can replace um, hardware router, in some cases, with a complete software solution with the idea of being able to, to scale solution easily and also to build a custom interface, a user interface, more easily. Um, if you're interested in demonstration, I'm available in the room uh, just next door. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we will now ask uh, several of the other startups who have also received prizes and who have also participated in the uh, sandbox uh, or sandboxes. Several of them you have seen next door. I hope you have been to see their demonstrations. And if you haven't, I hope this gives you um, the, uh, the, the will to go before the end of today and before they pack up and, uh, and fold up all their uh, demonstration material. Um, I would like now to invite Bram from B Robots to tell us about his project. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Bram Verbuke. I'm the co-founder of uh, B Robots, a Belgium company that we founded in 2018. Uh, we were part uh, for almost a year and a half uh, at the VRT Sandbox uh, initiative, which was a, a very fruitful collaboration, and we are now finalizing it. Um, B-Robot stands for Business Robots, uh, and what we do is process automation. So uh, digitalization is, is everywhere, uh, you know that. But uh, however, we have noticed that still a lot of companies, in a lot of companies, still a lot of uh, repetitive tasks are executed manually. And that is because of the fact that uh, IT departments don't always have the time or the resources or the budget uh, to automate those tasks by means of building software. Or that uh, you have bought a piece of software and that doesn't match for 100% your needs. And the result is that, that even though still a lot of uh, repetitive mind-numbing tasks uh, are executed manually, which has a negative impact on cost, on quality, but also on work joy. And our mission at B-Robots is to help companies uh, identify those tasks and automate them. And uh, we have uh, created four types of services that we use to automate those uh, tasks. And the first one is robotic process automation. And with robotic process automation, we built, in fact, software robots that are capable to mimic the exact same actions that a human would do on a software system. Uh, copy pasting of data, merging data from one place to another, uh, transferring data from one place to another, uh, scraping data from the web, uh, opening email and attachments, and use that data to create an offer, for instance. 
There are a lot of examples, uh, and that is something that we can automate by means of robotic process automation. Now, there's one uh, disadvantage, if I can say it like that, and that is that those robots are not smart. Uh, they need structured input, uh, and the process should be rule-based. Uh, so what we have created is a new service, which is called Smart Automation, where we built, in fact, a machine learning layer on top of those robotic process automation bots, uh, and that allows them to uh, have unstructured data and have it structured, and to go beyond rule-based uh, automation. And then a third uh, type of service that we do is uh, uh, workflow automation. So sometimes there are some workflows that are not automated yet. You need uh, applications to do so. What we do is we build those types of workflows and applications by means of low-code development. Uh, and the big advantage there is that you don't need to write code. You can use predefined, configured uh, blocks and you can construct them into an application which makes that in a, in a matter of two weeks, three weeks time, you can build a complete uh, application. And a fourth, 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 a fourth uh, type of service that we offer is uh, process discovery. Uh, with process discovery, we use tools uh, to identify uh, potential automation candidates uh, and then automate them for you. So you might think, okay, what has this all to do with media? Um, I will finish up. Uh, well, for, uh, for VRT, we have automated the process uh, for proactive upload of VRT content and claim that content uh, on YouTube. So um, that is maybe an, uh, something to, to think about. More information, more examples, uh, more uh, info, just go next door uh, after the session. Thank you. I need to introduce you before you jump on stage. I know you're in a rush to come here, but... Uh, so, next guest is uh, Thomas from uh, Winston Analytics in Belgium. Hello, I'm Thomas. And yesterday, I had a midnight deadline to apply for an innovation grant for my company. Deadlines, innovation, those concepts you're familiar with, I suppose. And so I did the usual, a lot of coffee, some fresh air with the open window, and music on the radio. I submitted the application at 11.52, which is early. And I gave myself a pat on the back and a break. But then, I wanted to start on my pitch. And actually, my inspiration already went to bed. And my energy was dripping faster away out of my body than the caffeine was sipping in. I was staring into the abyss of a writer's block. I had no clue how to explain my innovation to this distinguished audience. Until, until the tune of the midnight news faded away and I heard the journalists highlighting the evening news. And at that moment, I heard his very peculiar way of phrasing his words and of stressing his message. And I know I how I can explain Winston Analytics. Why do I love this journalist? What's his impact on me as a listener? Why is his style of communication my preferred style? And can we teach his way of communicating on the others. Hint, it has to do with the voice. Because I tried. I tried to use his scripts and do it in my own voice, and I failed miserably. So what are we actually doing with Winston Analytics is we have a speaker coaching bot, and that's to help you to improvise or improve your communication skills based on dynamic feedback, statistical insights, and smart exercises based on voice analysis and artificial intelligence. And we use four parameters. The voice, the pace of the voice actually, is it the turtle or the hair? The pitch intonation, is it monotonous or is it theatrical? The amount of pauses, hesitant or breathless, and the power. And the power is a sign of um, of dynamism, of passion that you're actually speaking with. So that's what we're doing, but how did we work together with the VRT, the Flemish Broadcasting Company? Last year, they had uh, 1,000 hours 
of voice coaching by their in-house uh, speech therapists. And we thought we can tackle this process, we can automate it a bit, we can make sure that the habit change of using vo your voice in a professional way is better. And it's always dif difficult when you try to change your habit. And we did three things. First of all, we uh, gave a lot of encouragements and motivations because without motivation, you will not even start. We gave exercises and we tried to automate the process by giving automatic feedback. So those are the things that we did with the VRT and actually what was the best practice, what would you get out of it, and maybe that's interesting for you as well, is if you have to present, if you have to do something, try to be fast on the highway, and that means if you're explaining something easily, you can speak very fast, but if it's becoming difficult, slow down in the corners. And for your pitch, if you want to make sure that you're not boring, have some variation in your intonation. And you should aim for 40 hertz. It's the difference between your lowest voice and your highest voice. So, if you're intrigued, or if you want to use some innovation, if you're intrigued on how your podcasts, your presentations, your news sounds, or your best anchor is actually sounding, or if you want to know how the score of the, the, score of the presenters of this conference, get in touch with Winston Analytics in the room next to here. Thank you. Very, very interesting product, if I may say so, not just in terms of media. I think a lot of us who make presentations regularly or moderate regularly uh, should have such a tool. So I think that we have uh, now come to the time of our final presenter, last but certainly not least. I'd like to invite Ricardo Moreira from Steam Root in France. Thank you. Good afternoon. So I'm Ricardo and uh, I'm going to present you Streamroot. So let's begin by the beginning. Uh, Streamroot is a French company that has been founded six years ago uh, by three founders, three young engineers, uh, with the ambition to scale the video streaming to billions of users around the world. Uh, after six years of a startup journey, we have been very recently acquired by Centrelink with the ambition, with the objective, to uh, increase the value proposal of their own CDN uh, by improving the QoS, but also by scaling uh, the CDN in terms of footprint, but also in terms of capability, uh, capacity. Sorry. Um, so, with Streamroot, today we um, support uh, major media companies such as France TV, Canal+, Plus, M6, TF TF1, um, Radio Televisión Española, TV Player in the UK, TVB in Hong Kong, etc., etc. And all these um, companies rely on Streamroot to deliver their live and VOD content online. Uh, and when I say online, I mean on their web platforms, but also on their iOS and Android platforms, and very soon natively on um, uh, any kind of uh, very specific set of box. Um, so, Streamroot is actually a video software company, um, leader on the client side uh, video streaming. Um, so, we have skills in video player, we also have skills in video data science, and, um, and what other skills do we have? <laughs> I forgot one. <laughs> um, uh, well, and yeah, and obviously on the content delivery sourcing, which is, which is key. Um, so, in terms of technology, we have two products. Uh, the first one is a, company, is a product called Streamroot DNA. DNA stands for Distributed Network Architecture. So, it's actually a web RTC based uh, mesh CDN solution, allowing to uh, increase the quality of the service of the streams delivered, also to scale the CDN in terms of footprint and in terms of capacity, and to decrease the video delivery costs. So actually, Streamer DNA uh, was the first product that we offered to the market uh, six years ago. And um, re recently, it was last year, we launched a new product called Streamer Compass. So Compass is a CDN balancer, allowing to switch from one CDN to another one midstream uh, on a per segment basis and also on a per user basis. So maybe it's a bit technical, but the idea behind is that 
we improve the user experience by making, make it, making it sorry, seamless to the end viewer. So that was all for uh, the presentation. I thank you for your attention. Uh, there are many information, so feel free to stop by the demo booth and I'd be happy to, to answer all, all the questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and perfectly on time as well. I think we have learned a lot. I think there has been a lot of food for thought today. And it's been a very dynamic and interesting day.